Now, this is the concept of dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. So all of you have your cell phone with you, am I right? Some of you might actually be attending this class on a cell phone. Anyone of you attending the class on a cell phone as of now? Okay, not here yet, but someone would be at times. Hmm? So do you think the cell phone, your uh, application processor, hai, uh, it has a rated frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. Do you think it always operates at 2.5 gigahertz? Huh? So when you are playing a game on a cell phone, when you are doing some really CPU intensive stuff, at that point of time, you need 2.5 gigahertz. But if you are just reading some text message, browsing the internet, regular text pages, you don't need that high performance. The system does not need that. So what does the system do? System says that, oh, let us reduce the frequency of operation. The load on my CPU is not as much. Instead of two gigahertz, let me operate at only 200 megahertz. I have reduced dynamic power consumption by 10 times. That is dynamic frequency scaling. Hmm? Now, if I'm operating at 200 megahertz for let us say past one minute, the system says that probably I don't really need to go into very high frequency for us for some more time now. So let me also lower the voltage of operation because for 200 megahertz, as you know, at low voltages, I can have larger delays, but I, at 200 megahertz, I will still be able to meet my performance of 200 megahertz at let us say 0.7 volts. I don't need 1.2 volts. So I reduce VDD from 1.2 to something like 0.7. What happens? So I first reduce frequency and then I reduce voltage also. And I saved much more power because it was 1 by 2 CV square F. Reduction in S led to linear reduction in power. Reduction in V additionally led to quadratic reduction in power. And by managing both V and S, I reduced power cubically. Sir? Yes, Raghav? So this voltage scaling, I mean, I, I get that if we reduce that V, we save on power. So, but like, how can I reduce that V? I mean, that, that is, is what is shown over here. In this figure, what we are showing is that there is a voltage regulator that we add into our system by there is we add a controller in our system which we call as a dynamic voltage scaling controller which observes the workload and the temperature if the temperature goes very high it says oh, 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 oh my temperature is going very high my package may melt i need to reduce power consumption it would say okay reduce frequency Reduce voltage. Reduce voltage by telling the voltage regulator that you have to reduce the voltage. Huh? Now, in another case, when the workload is very less, you're just browsing internet at a very slow pace. You're reading some text pages. It says, I don't need to operate at a very high frequency. The workload is very less. Reduce frequency, reduce voltage. So that is how we will be able to do it. So, sir, when the situation kind of arises that I can reduce my frequency, then only I can think of voltage scaling, right? Because, yes. Because yes. voltage will, voltage reducing will reduce, increase the delays also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is where we said, na, we will start first reduce frequency. We will observe if, if we can operate at that low frequency for a reasonable amount of time. Then we will assume that, okay, if, if we have not required to be at a high frequency for the past, let us say, uh, one second, I can also reduce voltage. Okay, hmm? so but that will also impact our frequency in a certain way. So I was already operating at a lower frequency, is it not? Okay, okay. So earlier I had only scaled the frequency, but not the voltage. voltage. So yes. I'm, I'm basically making it so that is consistent with that frequency. Yes. Okay. And to be able to do this, you will need circuits which are called as level shifters. Because now there is a high voltage domain, there is a low voltage domain, 
and you will need to have level shifting happening between them. Otherwise, there will be short circuit currents. Hmm? Are you able to see this? Yes, Vishal. So, sir, if uh, if somehow like uh, we are using like we are doing something which needs more like which is more intensive, which needs more. So, what will happen first? We we'll increase the voltage first, or we we'll increase the frequency first? You tell me. So, I think uh, it should be like we'll increase the voltage first, and then we'll increase yes. the frequency. Because if I directly increase the frequency without increasing the voltage, what happens? Uh, there will be some race conditions which will fail. Okay. Yeah. So system will fail. Yeah. Okay. 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 So which conditions will fail, sir? I'm sorry. So when you raise the frequency before the voltage, which conditions you fail, is that? Race conditions, setup time, hold time, something somewhere will fail because your system is slow. It, it's it's at low voltage, but you want to operate it at a much faster rate. So something, some outputs will not come in time. Something will go wrong. Okay. So you have to so, first increase the voltage and then the frequency. Okay. So by increasing the voltage, we are making the device faster and then the frequency. Yes. I know. So you see, you, you realize why it was important to understand impact of voltage on delays before we talk about DVFS? Yes, sir. That was why that was the previous session and now this one. Okay, so what we have done today, we've looked at dynamic power consumption being made of two components, switching power and short circuit power. And we have said that to reduce switching power, you could use, uh, you could reduce all the various things. You could reduce activity factor by you know, preventing glitches, by uh, clock gating, by using AND and NAND gates and so on. We said that you can reduce capacitance by using smaller devices, uh, doing smarter placement so that wire capacitance is also reduced and so on. And we said you could also do voltage and frequency scaling, dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. Okay. And then to reduce short circuit power, you would reduce, you would have good transition slopes. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So with that, we will close today's session. In the next session, we will start with uh, uh, static power.